5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is best. Their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. We briefly touched on the topic of non infectious diseases a couple of videos back. But a non infectious disease is just a disease which is non contagious, so it's not contagious. Not contagious, which means we can't infect anyone with it. And it's also not caused by a pathogen. So not caused by a pathogen. So that's non-infectious. Remember, disease just means sort of a part of your body which just malfunctions, which doesn't work properly. That's the best definition we came up with. There's not really a de definition for disease, but a part of your body which doesn't work properly is considered to be diseased. Now, there's three different types of disease or non-infectious types of disease, environmental disease, nutritional deficiency diseases, and genetic or inherited diseases. And the reason why I'm mentioning all these is because the dot point itself says identify. So we have to identify in this case means name. Name causes of non-infectious diseases use an example from each of the following categories. Inherited disease, nutritional deficiency diseases, environmental diseases. So these are the ones we have to talk about. And what is the environmental disease? Well, that's, so for example, this is one of my beautiful drawings here. I've just drawn a random person. And he is exposed to, for example, the sun. The sun has these strong UV rays, which is part of his environment. So that's a person's environment. And the sun rays can cause skin cancer. So that would be a, the environment giving him a disease. In this case, UV radiation from the sun giving him skin cancer. Could be factories. And these factories have these chemicals which come out of it. And these chemicals can also give us different types of diseases. It could even be, you know, if this person is walking along, he trips over like a little bit of an object here, an obstacle, and literally trips over and breaks his leg. That's a physical disease caused by the environment. It's because his leg is actually kind of broken. So even that would be an example of an environmental disease. But it's just the environment itself which is giving him somehow giving him a disease. We're going to give a cover a couple of examples in a second. What is nutritional deficiency diseases or conditions? In this case is usually due with a lack of a vitamin or a mineral or lack of protein in a diet. We have to have a balanced diet. This here is the food pyramid. And the food pyramid gives you lots of different types of food to eat. And the reason why we need to eat these different types of food is because they provide us different types of nutrients that we all need to have normal function in our body. So if, we have, if you have a nutritional deficiency, disease or a problem, that means you have, don't have enough of certain vitamins and minerals which, were which would usually be provided by these different types of food. It's usually due with food itself, nutritional deficiencies, diseases. And then we also have these inherited diseases as well, which stop one says we need to talk about as well. Now, inherited diseases are, for example, chromosomal mutations or chromosomal problems. So chromosomes are the things which hold all our DNA in it. And humans usually have 22 pairs of normal chromosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. So overall, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Now, if one of these chromosome pairs, for example, has an extra chromosome somewhere, so instead of having two in its pair, it has three, that would be a, an example of an inherited disease because now we have too many chromosomes and that will cause a problem, that will cause a genetic problem, a, give you a disease which would usually, which you would usually not have. So it can either be because of too many chromosomes or it could be because a certain gene doesn't work properly. And remember from the last Blueprint of Life, we talked a lot about genes. So this gene here, for example, codes for this protein. So this protein here, it's all perfect. It works as it should. But the problem is if you have a mutation, so let's say here we have a G, Everything else is the same, but instead of it having a G here, it has an A. This changes the actual protein, so now we have this protein. And this protein doesn't do its proper function anymore. It's a malfunctioning protein. And that itself, maybe this protein might have been really important for something, because this protein now doesn't work pro properly anymore. It has given you a disease. All right, so a inherited disease is either due to chromosomes or to a gene mutation. Now I'll cover actual examples of all three of these. The first one are the inherited diseases. As I mentioned earlier, it's due to a gene mutation that happens in a gamete. Remember, gametes are either your sperm 
or your egg cells. So these are our sex cells. So if we have a mutation in either sperm or eggs, that will lead to a new allele, which doesn't always have to be bad, but it can also it can be bad. And some of them will give you disease. Some of them will be neutral and have no effect, whereas others will be beneficial, but it can also be quite harmful as well. So it can either be a gene mutation, or there can be an error in the DNA replication, which might cause an extra chromosome. As we said earlier, we talked about it's either to do with chromosomes or with genes. So cystic fibrosis, an example of a gene. So this is a inherited disease caused by a gene mutation. Now usually you'd have, this is our cell membrane, and our cell membrane we have these proteins, and these proteins help us carry, these protein carriers help us carry things out, in and out of cells. In this case, this huge protein carrier helps us to remove chlorine ions and pump it from inside to outside. That's what these chlorine ions do. They go through this channel and move outside the cell. But the problem is, what happens is this protein, which usually is produced, will open the channel, so we'll deposit here and open the channel, which means these chloride ions can actually pass through. And everything works perfectly fine. But if you have a mutation, then this protein that you produce that's meant to open the, the actual meant to open the actual lock here. So you can see here, here this part is removed, whereas here it's blocking. Because the protein doesn't fit anymore, it's malfunctioning, which means these the channel doesn't open. Nothing can fit through, which means that these chloride ions, which are here, won't be able to pass through to the other side. And what that means is you have a huge amount of mucus sort of building up, mucus, amount of mucus membrane building up, mucus outside the cell, which would usually not happen. And that gives you a slimy throat and eventually cause you to die. So it's actually, you usually die average life expectancy about 30 to 40 years if you have cystic fibrosis. And it's called, caused by gene mutation. Right, so talk about the cause. The cause is a mutation in a gene which changes this um, CT, CFTR channel protein. This usually is protein which opens up this channel being malfunctioning, which means it doesn't open up the channel. And so that was the cause of cystic fibrosis. And Down syndrome. In this case, Down syndrome is caused by an extra chromosome. Right, so this is the chromosome version. And here we have, it's to do with an extra chromosome of the chromosome pair 21. So here is our chromosome pair 21. Usually there's two pairs, but you can see here we've got an extra one. So it's three instead of two. And this is a huge problem because that means you're gonna have things which aren't there, which are meant to, you're not gonna have a proper development of your fetus, of your embryo. So it causes developmental problems. It causes problems when it comes to, I'll show you a picture as well. This is, this is someone who has Down syndrome. So you can see they look a bit different already. It's because it's, when they were in the actual womb, so when they were being developed, and there was some malfunction because of this extra chromosome, which um, causes slight ret retardation, and it causes the face to be malformed and a couple other things. Right, that's Down syndrome. And these are two examples of inherited diseases. Now, nutritional diseases or deficiencies, I mentioned earlier, it's due to a lack of vital nutrients. So some nutrient, which was quite important, we might not be getting enough of. And there's two different types of nutrients. There's macronutrients, which are the ones which we need in high amounts. So you, these are your fats, your carbohydrates, your proteins. These are your macronutrients. And then there's your micronutrients. Micro means small. You need to these in small amounts. So for example, your minerals and your vitamins. And if you miss certain minerals or vitamins or fats, or carbohydrates, or proteins, then we have the a nutritional deficiency. Now, the examples would be scurvy. A scurvy is caused, so that we need to talk about the cause. Scurvy is caused by vitamin C deficiency. What vitamin C deficiency causes, what it results in, is you can see here this person has, or is beginning to lose his teeth. So he has teeth that are being, are, are being lost. You have your skin, which starts to basically almost rot. It, it, it's very weak because vitamin C helps you to build collagen, which needs to build strong connective tissue. So if you have a vitamin C deficiency, that means you're going to have lack of this collagen, which means you have lack of connective tissue, which is one of the reasons why your teeth fall out and you have this swelling and swollenness. Um, but yeah, most people, again, don't worry about vitamin C deficiency. Most people will not have vitamin C deficiency. You only need a tiny amount, 
people who used to have vitamin C deficiency or scurvy were sailors because they would go out for long periods of time without any fresh food and vegetables. Any fresh fruits and vegetables are your main source, not your only source. Again, most people in our developed world have no problem with scurvy. But sailors used to because they'd be on a ship for four, five, six you know, months and they would have absolutely no fresh fruit or vegetables or anything else which have vitamin C, which means they would get scurvy. Now, kvashio core, and I'm, I'm so sorry if I said that wrongly, but th what that is is a protein deficiency. So these children here, which is a very, very sad case, they are have a diet which is very poor in protein because they were, they're starving as it is, but their diet specifically is lacking in protein which occurs in many parts of Africa. And what that means is they almost look like they're gaining weight, but this is actually not gaining weight. What happens here is protein is really important when it comes to building connective tissue, muscle cells, and everything else. Uh, so they basically, these connective tissue help you keep your body in check and in place. But if you have a protein deficiency, a severe protein deficiency like these kids have, what happens is these proteins, which are meant to keep everything in check, these break down. And you have fluid, which would usually be kept in your cells. You have fluid, which just basically swells everything up. All fluid moves to places where it shouldn't be moving because the connective tissue isn't there where it's meant to be because of this protein deficiency, which means fluid will just cause that swelling that you can see here. And so that's fascia core, and that's caused by a protein deficiency. And then you also have things like iron deficiency. And iron deficiency causes anemia. You have vitamin D deficiency causes rickets, for example, in children, young children. Anemia, anemia. And there's a couple other ones, right? But overall, you need to know at least one example of a inherited disease and one example of a nutritional deficiency and the actual cause as well. Now, the last one is the environmental disease. And these overall, there are three broader category, substance abuse, as sort of carcinogens, which come from the environment, and sort of lifestyle-related diseases. Now, heart disease, which we're going to cover in the next video, heart disease is an example of a lifestyle-related disease. And the reason why is because lack of exercise and a high saturated fat diet, which comes obviously from food, these are two things which cause heart disease, or may, some of the main contributors to heart disease, and they come from your lifestyle. So you, these are lifestyle choices you're making. That's why it's lifestyle disease, but it's still to do with the environment because it's not caused by a genetic factor or by a nutritional deficiency. It's caused by your lifestyle, which is considered to be on the branch of environmental diseases. And we also have lung cancer. Lung cancer is, for example, caused by chemicals and cigarettes. And thereby, it's also, it's, it's kind of like a lifestyle, falls in the lifestyle category of your envi environmental diseases and a bit of uh, into your substance abuse category as well. Because you're, if you're smoking a lot of cigarettes, you're using substances. And, but it's your choice to smoke or not, so it's also lifestyle disease. But skin cancer is an example of carcinogens in the environment. So, sort of your typical environmental disease. All of these are environmental diseases, right? These are just sort of subcategories. But skin, skin cancer is caused by UV radiation. So UV radiation is the cause of skin cancer. And cirrhosis, cirrhosis is caused by drinking too much alcohol. What happens, this is your liver here. This is your liver, liver as it should usually be. And if you drink too much alcohol, what will happen is you're going to have these small deposits here, which you can see here. And what they are is they are fat deposits. So if you drink too much alcohol, you're actually going to have fat deposits in your liver. This is usually when you're alcoholic in, in most cases. And that means you're going to have cirrhosis, which is... Another word for it is fatty liver, and that will cause you massive problems as well because liver is quite important. But this is caused by substance abuse, in this case alcohol, so it's also an environmental disease. Right, so for this dot point, identify cause of non-infectious disease using an example from each of the following categories. The ones we just covered, these are all you know the environmental diseases. You, need to, you should remember a name and the cause of it. So for example, heart disease is an environmental disease and is caused by a lack of exercise or high saturated fat diet. You might, oops, you might, you know, decide to remember Down syndrome. It's a example of an inherited disease. It's caused by an extra chromosome. 
Um, we have nutrition deficiencies. Now you might pick one. You might say scurvy. Scurvy is caused by vitamin C deficiency. That's kind of what you need to know for this dot point. It's a pretty straightforward dot point. But I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.